Just in case you're wondering what this is, it's a forge and it's currently heating up to around 650 degrees Celsius. You'll find out why very soon. In the meantime, if I was a student doctor and I wanted to practice my injection technique, I'd probably do so using one of these, an orange, because its skin resembles the texture of human skin. Tonight, for the first time live on British television, we are going to see a man lie bare-chested on this bed of nails while that 4x4 drives over him. It's day three of Death Wish Live. Welcome then to day three of Death Wish Live. If you've just joined us, we're halfway through the week, so this is what you've missed, but this is what's still to come. Monday saw Jonathan Goodwin fail to cheat the gallows, and yesterday the pain men took on the animal kingdom. Still to come on Thursday, we have Pyro Boy, and then on Friday, Jonathan's back for his most dangerous escape yet, buried alive. Tonight's show contains no magic. There are no tricks. The man you're about to meet is not a magician, wizard, warlock, soothsayer, druid, or any other robed career choice. Everything he does involves genuine risk. It's mind over matter. He is Zamora, the Torture King! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Zamora, the Torture King, or Tim. You can call me Tim if you want. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to chat about what you're doing in a minute, but first of all, okay. let's get straight over to this roaring furnace. Now, let's this is do a that. forge. It's looking good. Yeah? Is it looking good? It's Be looking really good. Before you even begin, uh, it's warning time there on Death Wish Live. Everything you see Tim do tonight, do not attempt to replicate in any way. He has trained for years to do this. It's really, really dangerous. Tim, what's going on? You've got two long metal rods well, in a burning furnace. We've got a forge, propane forge, like a blacksmith uses. Made some red hot pokers. People want me to do something with the red hot poker. Well, I'm going to do something with it. You can see the color, the uh, orange glow. It's losing its colors. It's staying out here, but I put it into the uh, into the water. You can hear. Bringing that to a boil, cooled it down. But the other one, I'm going to cool down a different way. I imagine you're going to do something highly dangerous. Yes. Uh, with that, let's get the furnace turned I've off. I'm going to tell you, we got to turn that furnace off so you can hear what I'm going to taste. Taste. Whatever you do, never stick a red hot poker in your face. Just so you know, our fire eaters uh, deal with temperatures of around 200 degrees Celsius when they fire eat. Oh. <laughs> that uh, metal rod is currently around 650 degrees Celsius. Now I've licked some of the color off of that. It's gone down in the color, but as you see, as we put it in the water, the heat, still there, still a lot of it. Okay. And that's kind of a warm-up. Yeah. It's kind of the appetizer for the uh, tonight's entertainment. Right. Uh, we can see what just happened in slow motion. Have a look at this. This is Tim putting a red hot poker in his mouth. What does it taste like, Tim? It tastes like burning. It tastes like it's it's hard to describe because the metal when it gets hot it sweats. It kind of if you see it's left some of the metal in the. Uh, in the water, it kind of gets like little bits of molten metal on the outside, and that's left coated on my tongue. I didn't think it could be any worse than just putting a red hot poker in your mouth, but sweaty metal doesn't that's sound right. pleasant. Sweating metal. Does it that's hurt? What it is. 
Does it hurt? Um, it's like drinking a really, 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 really hot cup of coffee. It, it's a little bit unpleasant, but uh, I can tolerate it. Okay, now uh, Tim, as I said, isn't a magician. There's no trickery involved. He is, in fact, a fakir. Uh, it's a new word to me. Here is what fakir is. The word fakir, derived from the Arabic word for poverty, became linked to these magic men because of their humble lifestyle. Renouncing their material comforts, these mystics would travel from town to town, dazzling the crowds with their ability to perform tricks that would defy the laws of nature and subject their bodies to acts beyond the normal human pain barrier. Often, they would lie on a sharp bed of nails, supporting heavy weights on their chest, eat glass, walk on fire, and perhaps most mind-blowing of all, pierce their flesh with skewers. Fakirs were brought over from the East to Europe and America, and at first they were seen as scientific curiosities. I like the music with my meals. But it didn't take long for performers to realise there was money to be made from this newfound fascination. Soon acts were turning up in sideshows and theatres, passing themselves off as Middle Eastern fakirs, but performing watered-down versions that often relied on magic tricks and illusion. So that's what a fakir is. Tim is a fakir. Why do you do what you do? Well, I became interested in this from the entertainment aspect of it. I read about this when I was very young in books of uh, people doing it in the circus and the sideshow. But as I researched, I, I discovered it went back to the, uh, the root of it, the fakirs from the uh, Middle, East, Middle Eastern countries and in India. And I began to study the uh, root source of it. And it was just a constant fascination for me that I just pursued throughout my life. I am... Um... I, I, I've spent a bit of time with you now. I like you a lot, Tim. Don't people think you're just a bit weird? Well, they think I'm a little weird, but uh, even more so when I do what I do here. You can't, fact, you can't wait, say, can you? You can't no, wait can't. to get this the, in. Uh, I started with the meal, the hot poker. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to eat the light bulb. I'm going to take this light bulb, I'm going to eat it, but I see I have a problem. Right. Oh. It's not going to fit in there. So what I'm going to have to do... You don't have to do this. Well, if I want to eat it, I have to do this. Right, true. I'm uh, going to break this up into smaller, easier to swallow pieces. The hammer. The hammer's It's still in the not mains. cooperating. Yeah, it's still in the mains. Well, it's it out, for its remember. life. It loses no the, the shattered remains you can see right there. Yeah, that's really sharp, broken glass before you even put that anywhere near yourself there. Uh, don't get a light bulb. I mean, I have several. They're easy to come by and break it up and then do what Tim is about to do. Well, I did promise I'd eat it. There's no turning back. Oh, oh no. No. <laughs> no, that's not oh, that's not no. A light snack, brilliant. <laughs> You're a bright spark. <laughs> the puns never end. <laughs> nothing in the glass, nothing in the mouth. All the way okay. to the stomach. Uh, we're going to have another look at it in a slow motion. How, how old were you when you first ate your first piece of glassware? I actually waited a while for that. I, I, I'd been eating fire since I'd been about 17, but I was in my 20s, up into my late 20s before I ate glass. I'd read about it, and uh, it was only until I found somebody who had experience in it that I actually went forward and started to do it. And it's very difficult to find people who have experience in these type of things, because it, when I was um, studying it, it was pretty much a, a lost art. Yeah. Come here, I love you. You want to give me a big hug? I do. Okay. I, I'm just. I, All right. I can't believe you're doing this. Um, okay. So, Tim still has to lie on a bed of nails, uh, even after eating a light bulb and a red hot piece of metal, and have a truck drive over him by the end of the show. Uh, we rehearsed the stunt. So well, we did a safety check earlier today just to make sure everything was going to be okay. Here's what happened. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I like to hear it. Okay. Yeah. 
Obviously, we've got a few things to work out before we can do this live, but uh, I'm confident we can do it still. I am, really. Welcome back to day three of Death Wish Live. Now, if you are easily offended by graphic images, be very wary because in less than 10 minutes this truck is going to be driving over Tim aka Zamora the torture king while he lies on that bed of nails worst case scenario he's going to be turned into a fleshy sieve so <laughs> how does someone warm up for something like this while well, they eat a light bulb they put red hot metal in their mouths and now they do this. Tim, come here. Again. Again. Yeah. I, tr yeah. I trust you know what you're doing. Okay. You've, you've been do. doing this for a while. What's, what's next on well, the agenda of flesh? I'm going to show you why I'm known as the torture king. I'm going to demonstrate a feat of mind over matter. This will not cause me pain. I'm going to be taking sharpened pieces of wire, sharpened bicycle spokes, and be putting them through very strange parts of my body. This mind over matter thing, what are you thinking about when you do these things? I uh, take my focus away from myself. I basically, it's, it's a type okay. of meditation from the Middle East called Sufism, which I use, which I've studied, which oh. the Fakirs use. Okay, before you go anywhere near your arm with that very sharp piece of metal, don't ever get a very sharp piece of metal and put it near your arm in any way, shape, or form. He knows what he's doing. I think he knows what he's doing. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be taking, going not just through skin, but through muscle tissue as well. I'm going through the arm, through the muscle, through the bicep. So it pops out the other side. Just checking the jury. You can all see this, can't you? Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks. Oh, oh no. Oh dear. Oh, oh no, 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 no. That's. Oh. This serves no function. <laughs> <laughs> can only look with one eye. They must have been. I'm going to keep trying, keep pushing. Oh. It's really fighting me. <laughs> It's, your arm's fighting you. Yeah. There's a lot of tissue. There is a lot of tissue in there. <laughs> How's that? Uh, uh, it's going through. Oh, good. I hate for it to not go through. <laughs> You've been exercising uh, your left arm too much. Soon <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, no. you'll see on the other side. No. The skin begin to peel away. Peel away? Oh, I can feel it coming through. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh. It's really stuck in there. It's <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a little better grip. Oh, get it all the no, way through. No, no, no. <laughs> get a hammer? Uh, you cannot. You cannot do it if you don't want to do it. <laughs> Almost all the way. Oh you can stop. Almost. Yeah. Stop. Just give up. Give up. Oh. That last bit. <laughs> and right through, as you see. Oh. Right through. Yeah. Why not? Deep, why not? Deep into the center of the muscle. But uh, I'll give you another one. Is that, is that painful? <laughs> Is that, is, that, is that painful? No, it's not as you would describe as pain. I can feel it, but it's not painful. I've changed the way my mind is functioning, so it doesn't register as pain. No. Now I'm, this one... I'm, I'm happy with just the one. <laughs> you know, if I went through my tongue, you'd say, well, I've got a friend with a tongue piercing. That, that doesn't impress me. So I'll put it someplace you can't put a piercing. It's going to go under the tongue, keep pushing through the glands, through the muscle, keep pushing until it pops out under my chin, next to my throat. I won't be able to encourage you to encourage me when I do this. But the more you do encourage me, the easier it is for me to do. 
Help me out, tell me the first. That's Zamora. Watch it, Alex, watch it. Come on. Uh, How you doing, man? How am I? You good? Uh, actually, I can talk with this in. Okay. You see, there's uh, relatively uh, no discomfort, aside from the fact that I've got an obstacle in my mouth here. The, uh, I'll take this out. It'll be easier to talk. Okay. Do good. it right. No blood. Let's see what happens. Oh, no. Let's, let's hope you do it right. Oh. Okay, let's run out. No blood, no pain. I should mention this. I've studied many, many years in order to do this. And I think most people have enough sense not to even think about it. Good reminder. Just a little bit of blood there. This next one, I'd like to have you take this glove and oh. put it on. <laughs> oh, it's a rubber glove treatment. Huh? It's, uh, <laughs> Tim, you read my, my mind. <laughs> kind of stuck in here. Oh. It doesn't want to come out. It's, uh, have Alex help me out here. If we do this right, as I said, very little blood, but, uh, it's live, you never know what's going to happen. So what I'm going to have you to do is hang on, and I'll do most of the work here, all right? Oh, oh. I don't like the way it feels. Oh, dear, dear. I don't like the way it feels. I don't like the way it feels. <laughs> I don't like the way it feels. <laughs> <sighs> no Let's blood. hear it for some more! <laughs> Tim, drop of blood. There is a little bit of blood there, there. okay. Uh, now, Tim has to prepare, as if that's not enough, for the final stunt involving the better nails and the 4x4. Uh, before that happens, though, it's time to take a look at one of Tim's inspirations. Watch this. You are going to see a man have a 28-inch sword thrust through his body without hurting him. This is no fake, neither is it a miracle. Mirandajo is somebody I'd, I'd seen photographs of him. I thought it was incredibly amazing. Here's somebody who ran himself through, you know, front to back, or back to front, hundreds of times, having himself completely run through the center of the body with a sharp sword. This is no fake, neither is it a miracle. It could probably be done to you if you were willing to submit first to a dangerous operation. He believed that the, uh, his body would move apart and allow the sword to pass through him, and certainly a very incredible thing. He did his act in um, Switzerland, and uh, he's from from Holland, so the information that was out there was in these foreign medical journals, and it took a long time to really track it down. Many people try to like, kind of downplay what he did, um, because I think what he did is kind of so far beyond what we'd expect. He said he was doing it for some higher purpose than necessarily just entertaining people. He was uh, trying to show, change the world in a way, trying to show people something miraculous, which is, I think, what a, his name means in, in Esperanto. Meantime, Miriam Dejo eats and lives as an ordinary individual. The key to his secret is still locked in Eastern mysticism. There you go, one of Tim's inspirations, Miriam Dajo. Let's put you where you are right now. Are you yes. ready? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Again. One final hug, one final hug. One final you, come hug? On. Yeah. Okay. I'm, just be careful. I don't know what to say. I All don't right. know what to say. I'm going to take the shirt off. Tim's going to uh, get, get ready, ready. Uh, for his final stunt. Uh, all that's left for me to do while he's preparing is uh, tell you a little bit of fact and figureage about the car. Now, this is the car over for here. It's a 4x4 it's four four that is going to be driving over Tim. Uh, the car weighs 4,730 pounds. Uh, that's a lot on its own. It's also twice as heavy as any vehicle Tim's ever had driven over him previously. Why he's picked live on E4 to showcase the heaviest vehicle ever is beyond me. Now, uh, this trick has been done before using trickery. They have a weighted car. That's not happening tonight. This car is genuine. The stunt is genuine. There is real, genuine risk involved. Uh, I would say, before we even begin to move this vehicle, 
That's Don't right. ever get a bed of nails, a big 4x4, lie on the nails, put a TV presenter in the car and then have it drive over you. Okay. Ever. Okay, it looks like Tim Ugh. is almost ready. Uh, Tim, you all yeah. right? You all right, mate? I'm OK. OK. Uh, we've actually put a camera within the bed of nails. So we've got ultimate coverage. You can see everything. <laughs> if we're ready, then. Uh, Richard is our driver. Richard, would you start the engine and begin? OK, Richard. Start coming forward. Slightly left. Slightly left. That's it. That's the centre of all. Keep it coming. Slightly right. Slightly right. That's perfect. Right. Right. Straight on. Perfect. Left. 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 OK, we're over. Everyone's going to make sure Tim's OK. He's going to be pulled out. He's having a fit. OK. OK. Tim, are you, are you all right? Are you all right to get up? What happened? You OK? What? Are you, do, you need, do you need help getting up, mate? Are you OK? What the happened? car's gone over you. Oh, I guess I must have... Yes, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're right. Up here, yeah, how long have I been out? Uh, a fraction of a second, just yeah. as long as the stunt took. <sighs> I haven't been out long. Okay, and we're still on? Are we live? Yeah, we're live, we're live. Oh. It's just happened. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Other than having passed out. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I'm this is this, this is this is what you missed. Uh, I remember the front wheel. Get, well, let's see what I missed. Yeah, let's see what you missed. <laughs> this is what we saw. Uh, do you think you passed out at this point? Oh, I, th I remember the front wheel going over, and uh, then I went into some other strange place. Your eyes did seem to roll back. There we go. I seem to be the back of your head. There you've gone. There you've gone. That's you passing out. Uh, we are still live. We weren't out for long. Um, <sighs> so, Tim, uh, let's, let's see the back. Uh, it's okay. just been on a bed of nails. Look at that. No blood. Um, can you tell us that you are absolutely OK? I are can you... say I'm OK. Yeah. I'm conscious. I am move moving around. I can move my feet. And uh, I am speaking to everybody. So uh, I, I took a lot of pressure and obviously <laughs> squished me so hard. <laughs> that he just have a truck drive over it. Let's hear it for Zamora the Torture King. If you want to get checked out, uh, that's Tim Zamora the Torture King. Well done, mate. Absolutely yes. fantastic. And that's it for day three of Death Wish Live. But stick with us this week because there's some fantastic stuff on the way. Here is what you've got to look forward to over the next two days. See you later. Tomorrow it's the turn of Pyro Boy, and then on Friday, Jonathan's back, only to be buried alive.